Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest tutorial from Just the Basics. Today, we're going to look at how to create text that's made out of wool inside of Blender. We're going to learn how to do some displacement mapping, remeshing, and use some hair particle systems. So if any of these topics interest you, make sure to stick around. Now, this tutorial is inspired by the video game Unravel. If you've ever seen or played that game, you'll know that the graphics are absolutely stunning. So I thought it'd be cool to try and recreate some of those effects inside of Blender for free. I'm using Blender 2.8 Beta, so this is a daily build from May 2019. If you're using this in a future time, just a word of caution, some of the controls might change. So leave a comment if you're having trouble following along. Sorry for having a bit of a yarn. Let, yeah, get it? Yarn? Okay, let's get into the tutorial. First of all, we're going to want to go ahead and delete the default cube by hitting X or delete. Then we can hit Shift A and add in some text. Once we've done that, we can hit RX90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, then press Enter to confirm. Now we can go ahead and hit Tab to enter edit mode and type in our desired text. Make sure you're happy with what you write because in a future step we will going to save this so we won't be able to alter what we've written here. So spend a few minutes meditating and thinking about what you want to write here. Okay, now that we've got our desired text there ready to go, I'm going to go over here to the object data settings for our text. I call it the font settings but yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so symbolized by this A here. And under alignment, I'm just going to switch it from horizontal left to horizontal center just to make sure our text is nice and center. So what we can do then is we can navigate to this font tab, click the little arrow here to drop it down, and we can go ahead and hit this folder to load in our desired font. Now the font I'm going to be using is called Roman Serif. The reason I'm using this font is because I feel like it really uh, resembles the text style from Unravel. Well, at least at Google search said it was the closest match. So I'm going to use that, but you can use any font you want. There's going to be links for all the different materials and assets I'm using in this tutorial, so you can download them in the description, or you can have your own. So navigate to that folder, and once you've found that desired text, just double click on it to load it in. And there we have it. So next, I'm just going to go over to Geometry, click the little triangle to drop down that box, and I'm going to turn the extrude from 0 meters to 0 0.01. Just something nice and subtle to give it a bit of 3D depth. And I think that will do for what I want. Okay, so now make sure you're happy with your text and what it says because we're about to change it into a mesh which cannot be changed or altered. So once you're sure you're happy, go ahead and right click and click convert to mesh with your left side of your mouse. Now that we've done that, you'll see we've got our text here. Beautiful. Except if we hit tab to go into edit mode, the geometry is not very beautiful. So the problem we come across here is that if we were to add a displacement map, we would need to make sure we subdivide, or in other words, add a lot more faces to this text. But with our text being, or geometry, being so badly subdivided as it is, what would happen is we'd have thousands of faces in these areas here, while only several faces on the larger areas where we need the most displacement happening. That would mean our computer would seriously lag and our final render would not look good. So there's a simple way to fix this. If we go ahead, hit tab, get out of edit mode, and just navigate to the modifiers tab, we might switch to wireframe mode up here so we can see what we're doing exactly. And I'm going to add a modifier that's under generate, and just down a bit, it's called remesh. So if we click on that, you'll notice our text looks fantastic. Beautiful geometry and ready to go. Thanks for watching. Joking. What we're actually going to do is we're going to want to click this remove disconnected pieces, and we're going to click it so we can uncheck that box. So now we can affect all of our text and under Octree Depth, we're going to turn that up from 4 to something like 10. Now you see our geometry has been remodified to be completely made out of even little cubes and that's going to work really well for what we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Apply and then switch back to Solid Mode. So now we have optimized geometry that's going to be perfect for displacing. So what we might do while we've got this here, we might hit tab, make sure everything's selected by pressing the A key, and then hit U and select Smart UV Project to unwrap or project our object shape onto a 2D plane so that we can apply a texture and tell the computer where the texture should be applied on the object. That probably sounded really confusing. I'm sorry. Just hit OK. So now hit tab to get out of edit mode, and we'll navigate over to the shading panel in Blender 2.8. So just click on that 
And here's where we can start to add on our materials that will affect the look of our yarn text. So we're going to just go ahead and hit new. And straight away we'll load up the principal shader. We can hit shift A to add in a new shader. And this one's going to be an image texture. Just drop that in by left clicking and drop color to base color and then select open. So now you can navigate to the files that are available in the description unless you have your own texture you'd like to use and feel free to use that. But for the first texture of these four yarn textures that I've created using an awesome software that's free called Materialize, if you want to check it out, it's going to be yarn underscore 002 underscore color. So just double click on that to load it in. And you'll see we have it applied to our text. So it's looking good. Let's go ahead and left click to select this image texture and hit Shift D to duplicate and just drop it beneath. Now we can navigate to that folder to open a new image and this time we're going to select the roughness. So what we can do is we can then drop this from color to roughness and just to make sure under color space we've got it switched from sRGB to non-color because we don't want this to affect the color of our object. Now that we've done that we can go ahead and hit shift D on that image texture and load in another image texture and this one will be our normal map. So if we double click on that we can just go ahead and drag color to normal and make sure our color space is swept from sRGB to non-color. Now it's not really having the desired effect because we also need to hit shift A and add in a normal map in between these two nodes. So just drop that in the middle and there we go. Our normal map is working just how we want it to but our roughness map isn't. What we might need to do for our roughness map is just go ahead and hit shift A and drop in an invert node in between those two nodes. There we go, that's looking good. So now what we're going to want to do is we might go over to the UV editing page just so we can resize the wool or the size of this texture on our object. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit A in this panel to select everything and I'm going to hit S and just scale it up until one of the letters is something like the size of the square or pretty close to. It doesn't have to be perfect. I love hearing that when I'm watching a tutorial because I don't think anything I've ever done is anywhere close to that. So <laughs> that's really humble, isn't it? So now that we've sized that up, we can go back to the maybe the shading tab. Just have a look at all our text, make sure everything's sitting the way we want on the texture. And it all seems to be sitting pretty nicely for what I want. So we can navigate to the modifier section and this is where we're going to go ahead and give it the real wool kind of look. Because at the moment, it looks just like text with a picture of wool on it. So under modifiers, we're going to add another modifier under deform. And this one's the displace modifier. Now straight away, you'll see it's really deformed our text. So what we're going to do, we'll hit new texture. And we'll turn the strength from 1 to maybe just 0.04 to start off. Okay, that's not too bad. We'll just set the texture coordinates from local to UV. And now we'll navigate to the textures column and we'll open a new texture. And this texture is going to be our displacement map, the last texture in our set of four. So now you'll see that we've got this really bumpy effect, but it looks very um, square, very like pointy and sharp, not soft and nice like wool. So I'll right click and I'll hit shade smooth. That'll make it a bit smoother. But what we might need to do is we might need to actually subdivide it a few more times to give the object enough geometry. So what we might do is we might hit tab to enter edit mode. I'm just going to right click and hit subdivide. And I might, I think that'll be enough for now. I can always subdivide it later if I'd like. I hit tab to get out of edit mode. That's starting to look more like what I want it to. So what I might do now is I might turn the strength down a bit from 0.04 to 0.02. Okay, and now we'll leave it like that. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in our hair particle system. So if we navigate down just to this particle tab, we can go ahead and hit plus to add a new particle system. And what we're going to do is we're going to change it from emitter to hair. Now what you're going to notice is that we've got this crazy hair everywhere. That does not look like anything like what we want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create our own little particle strand or like strands of wool that are going to stick off of our text. So I'll just turn this off here for a minute so we don't have to worry about seeing that while we work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A, add in a new mesh and select plane. I'll just grab this along the X and move this whoop, a bit too far just so it's out of sight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit S then X to scale it down so it's nice and skinny like a little strand of hair would be. 
So this is a pretty big strain to hit. And we're going to hit tab to enter edit mode and hit control R to add in a loop cut. So once you've done that, just make, move your mouse around until you see this black line in the center, then left click. And then right click. Okay, so now we can navigate to our loop cut and slide settings and change the number of cuts from 1 to 10. This is going to give us 10 cuts in our geometry so we can modify it slightly to give it a more realistic random kind of look. In edit mode, I'm currently under vertices select, so that means that if I click anywhere, I'm going to be selecting individual vertice points. I want to be selecting the actual entire edge. So I'm just going to change to edge select by clicking this little icon up here. And then I'm going to enable what's called proportional editing by hitting O, the O key on the keyboard, which will allow me to grab one edge and move it while also affecting to a certain degree all the other the movement or location of the others. Let's just like have a look at how it works. So I'm going to hit G to grab and you see I've got this giant circle and I'm going to hit Z and I'm going to rotate it and I can scroll in or out to affect how much of my mesh I want to move. So I want the whole thing to or at least half of it to kind of bend like that. I'm just going to rotate it on the X a little bit. And all I'm trying to do here is I'm grabbing different edges and I'm just trying to give them a bit of randomness. I'm going to hit O, just turn off proportional editing for a second. Just move this down a bit like that. Grab it along the X. Maybe grab this along the X as well. Just to kind of give it some randomness as a piece of string. I might enable proportional editing by hitting O and just scale that down. Something like that. I'm pretty happy with. I might just finally scale this down to be a bit narrower on the end. And there we go. That looks like a really good piece of string. Well, not at the moment, it doesn't, but it will. I'll just right click and hit Shade Smooth, and then I'll hit Tab, Select All, and hit U, Smart UV Project. And what we can do is navigate to our material settings, just click this little drop down, and we can select the same red material that we've given to our text. So, the texture hasn't applied quite how I want, so let's jump over to the UV editing area and we just might scroll around till we can see it. Now if you're wondering how I'm moving around, I'm just hitting shift and middle mouse to move around easily. Also there's control and pressing the middle mouse um, cursor down. So that's what I'm using to navigate around. If you're probably maybe having trouble following along with that, I apologize. I should have explained at the start of the tutorial. Now just over here in the UV editing page, I'm going to hit A to select everything. I'm just going to hit S, then Y, whoops, I might just hit O to disable proportional editing. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit, then I'm going to rotate it. And what I want to do is I want to kind of scale this down till it's sort of flat. And that's good, I was just scaling that down on the Y. I might just change our yarn to the red color instead of the black map. And what I want to do is I just want to rotate this maybe 45 degrees, Oop, the other way, so I hit minus to invert it. And I'm just going to grab it and then rotate it a bit more just so it kind of mainly has the image of this main piece of string on it. So if we go to material view, you can see we just got this main piece of string and that's going to work perfectly for what we're going to use it for. So let's go over to the shading tab again where we were and that looks pretty good. So what we can do now is we can go back to our main text by left clicking that and go to our particle settings and turn them back on so we can see them and you'll see we still have our hair strands sticking out everywhere so let's go ahead and click advanced hair settings and then let's go down to render and select render as path and change it to object what we can do now is under object we can select our plane that we've just added in and there you have it our beautiful wool effect well not beautiful just yet what we're going to do we might change the scale from 0 0.05 to 0 0.003 now, that's very, very small, but what we're going to do is we're going to go up to physics and under forces, we're going to drag the brownian up to maybe something like 3.3. And what this is going to do is it's going to give a kind of random effect to our hair generation. So it kind of looks straggly and all over the place like actual real rough wool would look. Okay, so that's going to be pretty good for what we want for the moment. So now let's go ahead and go over to our world settings by clicking on the world then change the color by clicking this little circle here 
to environment texture. Now I'm going to hit open. I'm going to navigate to the textures I've got. These textures are provided by HDR Haven. So please feel free to go and support them on Patreon because they provide so many fantastic environment textures all for free. And they're really, really high quality as well. These are all 8K ones I'm using. So make sure to go and give them a like or support. That way they are able to keep doing what they do. So I'm going to select this one here called Sprout underscore Sunrise 8K. And just double click on that. And I might just go ahead and change my view now to rendered. Once we've done that, we can look around and we can see how our environment map has been applied. I actually want the sun to be behind my text to give it this nice backlighting kind of look. So what I'm going to do is under object settings, just here in the shading properties, I'm going to drop that box down and select world. So now we can alter our environment texture. To do that, I'm going to hit shift A and add in a mapping node. Just drop that in there and plug in the vector to vector. And then I'm going to hit shift A and add in a texture coordinate and drop in generated to vector. What this will enable me to do now is rotate my environment map like it was an actual giant sphere. So I'm just going to rotate it on the Z axis, Z axis I should say, just until that sunlight is right behind or maybe even just on the edge to give it a bit of angled light. So now we can set up our camera by hitting zero to go to our camera view to see where it is currently. Then let's hit N, select view, select lock camera to view and then hit N to remove that. And now we're able to scroll and navigate around our camera till we have it in position that we're happy with. Sometimes what I like to do as well is just hit one, then five to get completely flat view on the or in the view panel and hit control alt zero and that will lock the camera to your current view. And that'll maybe move it and center around a little bit. So that's looking pretty good for what we want. Our final step now is to go to render settings and I'm going to change the render engine from Eevee to Cycles. I'm going to change my device from CPU to GPU because that has a bit more punch to it. And now what we can do is under our hair settings or our particle settings, I'm going to turn the number up from 1000 to 10,000. And under film in our back here in our render settings, I'm going to change the um, background to transparent. And under performance, I'm going to change my tile size up from 64 by 64 to 256 by 256 as I find that renders better on my GPU. But you might have your own personal preferences for render settings. And finally, I'm just going to click denoise under the view layer to enable denoising. So then we can go ahead and hit F12 or render to render our image out and see how it looks. Okay, and here we have a rendered image of our final product. But as an option, something else we can do is we can improve the lighting a little bit on the front of the text. I'm happy with the back lighting, but what I did in one of my renders was I just went ahead and hit shift A added in a new light and I think spot should do the trick and just grab that along the z-axis and dragged it up and grabbed it along the y to bring it forward a little bit and grabbed on the x again just to place it above the center of the text now if I just switch back to rendered mode that looks pretty good so what I might do is just go ahead and duplicate this and add at least one light above every text maybe two for some of the wider texts Okay, now that's looking much better. I really like the lighting here a lot more. And as another additional setting, what I also like to do on this render is I change the resolution up from Full HD to 4K. To do this, just change the resolution input along the X from 1920 to 3840, so 3840, and the bottom one from 1080 to 2160. Although you can leave it at 1080 if you don't have anything else in your shot besides the text itself. So let's give that a render and see how that looks with our improved lighting. And there we have it, there's our render in 4K. Now, I'm really happy with that for this tutorial, but of course, if you wanted to improve the quality of the displacement map, or perhaps even make the wool appear bigger, you can just go ahead and edit the size of the text, um, the size of the material on the text in UV editing, simply by going to tab and scaling it up or down depending on what size you want. And if you wanted to affect the displacement to a greater detail, you can go ahead and into tab and just subdivide it again it might slow your computer down a little bit, but the result probably will be worth it. And as another option too for the displacement map, in the settings, if you wanted to have a great effect, just turn the strength up to something like maybe 0 0.06 or 7, and then you'll see that shine through even more. We hope you learned something from this tutorial and enjoyed following along. So until next time, 
This has been just the basics of creating the Unravel text inside of Blender.